This is the solar sonic infinity system. We made it. This is what we're calling the hive portion of the solar sonic infinity system. And holding this up around it are these bamboo poles that have sound circuits embedded within them. <laughs> So we like the idea of bits and pieces make a whole, and along that we wanted a hive, like nature and forest. So this is our beehive with its hexagonal compartments, and within a selected few of those we have our solar panels. And as the sun hits the solar panels, it converts it to electrical energy and transfer that, transfers that to the buzzers attached to the side, which hit against the acrylic and make the buzzing sound that you hear. So that's our hive. It's bright pink. It's kind of fun. Uh, in the poles we have our other types of sound. This one emulates more bird sounds, uh, different animals that you find in a forest. And what you do is you put our magic wand, which has a magnet at the end, to the pink dots on the side, and it would play a noise for you. <laughs> a, a problem like this has lots and lots of decisions that need to be made. Each decision is a problem that needs to be solved. So there's hundreds of problems we solved in getting this from an idea to something that was actually mounted out there in the yard. For decision making, we would all come together, together as a group and say, hey, what do you think about this? What do you want to do with this? Where should we go? And we always kind of had like a goal in mind and everybody input where, how they wanted to get there or what it was. And there, there was a lot of like drawing on the whiteboard where Sony like, you know, hey guys, what are we doing? And they'd go up with the whiteboard, write two ideas, and then we would kind discuss of it from discuss there. it and decide where it was we wanted to go. And we were able to move forward and then it came down to like actually designing the sound phrases that we eventually used in the projects. Like I kind of fondly remember like we all typed in like hedron or like a shape into Google search images and we just looked through the images, looked through the images and I saw this image of like a guy sitting on like a, our hive shape. So I'm like, hey, that must be pretty sturdy. We programmed a whole list of notes it can play in different octaves and that's what we want it to sound like, sort of emulating birds, but not quite because it's still a bit technological and we want people to see that. Well, the hardest part, like I did mostly programming and the, and the hardest part from that perspective at least was getting those darn microprocessors to actually work. Because it's it's like open source software, and so no one agrees on what the different pinouts are and how you actually control the chip. And so then you have to just do everything by trial and error, you know. Like the most memorable and fun part for me was on like the second to last week when we were all in the workshop and we needed to make all of these chips that went inside the bamboo. We knew how to make them and we had like the schematics and stuff, but we had like half of us on the soldering station and we had like three people on the main table and there was one person who was fixing them if they were broken, one person was testing them and the, all the others were making them. So the, the day I point to where it really sort of proved that we all were invested in it, we were all were like, laughing, we're all working really hard, but we're all laughing and having a good time, and we really felt like this was our project. I'm Andre Phillips, I'm Invention Programs Coordinator here at the Bakken Museum. I'm Justin Spencer, I'm the Youth Development Program Manager, and uh, I kind of oversee all the programs that we do here in our workshop space. I mean, part of what's great is we've been working with this particular crew of students for, for many years now, uh, many of them since they were yay high. And uh, we've had an opportunity to, to watch them grow and uh, have seen that their skills and interest and passions have really kind of flowered. Which one of you has been here longest? I would guess me. When did you start? Whenever I was first allowed to. <laughs> it's fun to think back and like, you know, when we go back, uh, especially like for this project, we um, went back and found pictures of them from the first couple of years that they were here. As you guys have gotten older, like your skills and abilities have grown. Definitely. And it kind of keeps up with your interest. It's, it's cool to me to watch you guys evolve and have your skills come with you uh, as you develop and become people of science.
Thank you.